So this video is all about modeling. And I don't mean runways, modeling with trig functions. And we're going to mostly limit it to uh, sine and cosine. So uh, because they're periodic functions, uh, there's a whole bunch of the real world that can be modeled with sine and cosine. And so we're just going to grab an example uh, of that. Okay, so damn, that was fast. Oh, darn, that was fast. <laughs> uh, so remember, this is our generic form. For us to get a function that models this, it would have to look something like this, seven sine uh, of pi over two, x minus three pi, blah, blah, plus seven, whatever. Um, so in other words, these numbers have to be filled in, the a, b, c, and d, so that we can have a function to model. Otherwise, we have an equation that has six variables and that doesn't do anyone any good. So let's get rid of all this nonsense. Um, so how do we figure out what the amplitude is? So let's uh, shrink this stuff so we can see this a little better. Uh, doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. So hopefully that's not too small. You can still see it on the screen. So I'm going to sort of sketch out a model of what's going on. Um, I usually do it right below, so I'm going to do that. Uh, let's do this. How do we ungroup again? I just need to do that. Ungroup. So now I want to grab this and pull it over to the side. We want to fill that out. We can get rid of that stuff here. Uh, delete that. And let's um, kind of sketch the function out right below these numbers. So yeah, let's stick with purple. So which of these numbers gives us our maximum point? Is this our maximum point? I'm hoping that you're seeing uh, that this number here is our maximum point. And that, what is our minimum point? Probably here. But we got to be careful if this thing's going to be modeled sort of more on the perfect side or the pretty side. How many months should it be between the high and the low? Remember, there are 12 months. I'm hoping you said six. Because if there's a sine curve, right, halfway between, if it's pretty, that's six months, this is three months, and that's three months. So for a total of 12, right? So look at the number of months in between 66 and 41. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can fudge a little if we want. We can use the 66 as our calculation, or we can use the 65 as our calculation. Um, but we're going to, the 41 and 66 will definitely be parts of our calculation, but notice how close these two numbers are. So I'm really going to think about my high point being right there, and I'm going to do that in a different color, just to visualize. And we'll still, still use the 66 and the 44 as our values. I'm getting kind of pedantic right now. And then our low, low number, our low point is 41 down here. So the question is, um, what, what does our function look like? Halfway between here, this will be the high point. Halfway between here, it's going to cross the x-axis. And I shouldn't say the x-axis. That is not the x-axis. That is what? If this is 66 and this is 41, this is not the x-axis because that's not zero. It is the, and hopefully you said midline. And then around that same distance, we're going to have another hash mark that where it crosses and then another low mark, which is over here in December. Um, so let's sketch this in. We'll do it in purple. Do, 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 do. And so this low point is here, cross the x, excuse me, cross the midline, cross the midline, boom. So this is at month one, this is at month seven. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, should be there. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay. So this distance represents or is related to what value? I'm hoping you're telling me it's related to the amplitude, which means it's related to the A value. So what could we determine the A value to be? Uh, 66 minus the 41 gives us... Twenty-five, but that's this total distance so the amplitude would be half of that so we get an a value excuse me we get an amplitude of 25 halves you could say 22 and a half if you really want to it kills me um, how do we convert that to an a value well remember it's absolute absolute value of a is equal to the amplitude if we go backwards that means that a could be plus or minus 25 halves so how do we resolve that well We'll get to that in a second when we start writing out the function. So right now we have a is equal to that. Let's write it over here because I'm going to erase this stuff. a equals plus or minus 25 halves. But we won't put both in this particular situation. We'll choose one. Uh, so let's erase that stuff. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. Now uh, let's think about d. That's our midline. So this was at 66. This is at 41. How do I figure out what that value is? You've already done part of the calculation. Um, if we know the amplitude to be 25 halves, couldn't we take 20, 66 minus 25 halves, which is the same as 66 minus 22.5, and get, what, 43.5? That's our midline. That's our D value. Does that make sense? What would this number be that's halfway between 66 and 41? This is how you calculate it. Your Y2 minus your Y1 divided by 2. So if you want to think of that, this is, this is really your Y max and your Y min. Your minimum Y value and your maximum Y value divided by 2 will give you your D value. So that's actually then, what do we say, 43 and a half? So 43.5. We got 43.5 down here too. All right. So we have the stuff that, is, that changes vertically, whether it's the, the vertical stretch or whether it's the shift or vertical shift. We took care of those. I believe those are the easiest. Now let's deal with the horizontal shift or phase shift, C. So in... If you're dealing with someone, you'll, you might watch other videos that'll do it this way, bx minus c plus d, or they'll go bx plus c, or they'll go uh, phi theta plus omega or, or whatever. Notice that these guys are not factored. Notice in the version that I believe we should use is factored. Why? To do this method, you need to have a little tiny equation, another little formula, a little thing for you to memorize or remember. And I'm saying, don't remember that. Just skip that part. You already know how to factor, or should. If you can factor and if you can distribute, you don't need to know that, need that other thing. Yes, it's going to deal with fractions, but we should practice that and get better at it anyway. Most of you want to go on to calculus, you need to deal with it. All right? So embrace it. Get better at it. Practice. Come see whoever you need, your favorite math teacher, whoever that is. It's probably not me. And go take care of it. Get better at it. All right? So looking at C, how do we get C? C is the phase shift. If we want to use the sine curve, where do we think of sine as it's having its starting point? Do we think, does it start here? Does it start down here? Does it start over here? Does it start up here? Does it start up here? Ooh, maybe that's cosine. Typically, we think of sine starting here. So what month is that? If this is 1, 2, 3, this is going to be 4. This is going to be at 4. OK? So my shift is 4. My shift is 4. Because of that symbol, we don't have to deal with anything else. 
shifting to the right four units is C, not the minus sign. It's C straight up. Okay, so let's get rid of all this, all my excited writing. Um, I'll speed that up. And then now, now we got to go after B. So now we're going to go after B. So B, B, B is the period, or B is related to the period. How is B related to the period? The period is equal to 2 pi divided by B. 2 pi divided by B. Technically, absolute value of B, but if we're going in this direction, it's not going to be a great concern. 2 pi over B. We're trying to find B, which means we should figure, be able to figure out from the circumstances what the period is for this set of information. So I'm hoping most of you are thinking, how long, so the period is how long does it take for the data to repeat? And how long does it take for weather, weather patterns to repeat on our planet orbiting our sun in 20, in 12 months? I almost said 24 because I have something else in my head. In 12 months, it takes that long for our weather patterns to repeat in terms of the major cycles. So yes, our period is 12 months. Oops, that's some crazy, crazy. Look at that. What is going on? Hit escape, baby. Uh, pow. Uh, it takes 12 months for our stuff to repeat. So if 12 months is my period, how can I calculate B? Let's multiply both sides by B, divide both sides by 12, and I get B is equal to 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6 which means I have the B value of pi over six, pow. So let's do this, double up the windows, and let's go use this data. So let's write my function as Y equals, it's going to, for now, we have to resolve this plus or minus, plus or minus 25 halves. There are times when we won't have to resolve that, but we'll get to that. 25 halves, and since we were using sine, that told us to start here, we're going to stick with sine, or else it'll be all messed up. And b is going to be pi over 6. And x, or m if you're using months, or theta, whatever. Theta would be weird for this one because it's not angle measures. c is 4. And we're going to have that face, excuse me, vertical shift of 43.5. And there's my equation with one little thing to fix. That guy, this plus or minus. So let me ask you this. If we started here, does this mimic the positive sine curve or the negative? And hopefully you said positive. This, the positive sine curve looks like this. So our specific answer for this data is y equals 25 halves sine pi over 6 x minus 4 plus 43.5. That's it. So there's an example problem of modeling. Uh, there are different types of things that model that you're going to be modeling. For instance, a buoy floating along the water it goes a maximum height, it goes a minimum height, and it comes back. You should be able to execute that information as well. But that's generally going through this problem shows you how to draw the A, B, C, and D from the data. And that's what you need to be able to do. All right, that's it. See ya.